So Stanley Tucci came today with some bronzino. Look at that! Wow! I mean, seriously? This is really looking good. Then he made a beautiful lemon risotto. Yeah, that's beautiful, yeah. Is it good? Yeah, thank God. He was right on, he was very uh, focused, and he was actually uh, very much about the technique and about cooking. For him, the, the conversation was accessory. I love that. I, I was very happy to see him uh, so interested in cooking. Parsley on the fish? Yeah, it should be. Okay. I cut the fish like that. Oh, so it was perfect. It was perfect. I'll put it here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some of the juice. Mm -hmm. So we just do a little, if you want, that on the side. Okay. So you like bronzino? I love bronzino because it's so light, but it still has like a meatiness to it. Yes. So you're very passionate about martinis? Yes, yes. And then you're very passionate about wine. I'm passionate about wine. I'm, not, I'm certainly not knowledgeable about wine. You had that show on PBS, Vine Talk. Yeah, I have no recollection of it, but you know, because, because we drank the, wine all the time. <laughs> you drink wine, yes. Yeah. Are you matching when you're cooking or? When I cook, I cook really for the whatever I can do to elevate the ingredients and make right. them the best. Because the chef is the chef. Right. And then the sommelier comes and he's thinking, oh, what can I do to complement right. uh, your dish? Right. And, and therefore we work together on a pairing. Right. But it's never the reverse. And I don't always yeah. believe you have to have white wine with fish, but... No, I love red wine with fish, too. Yeah. Now is the perfect month, those great uh, rosés from the south of France. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's nothing better than yeah. that. And you can drink all day. You I don't know. realize you sink slowly, but, mm -hmm. you know... I went to my friend's house in the south of France. I don't know how many gallons we drank. And she called it French water. I like that. Hey, this turns out. Yeah, and it's, it's your recipe. I'm, I'm just... Completely Super. shocked, I have to say. They both turned out really well, much better than I had anticipated, particularly the risotto, because I was a bit nervous. Yeah, I, I suppose I would have liked to have a smaller pan, but I, I actually think it was kind of nice that it cooked on a flatter surface. I've never cooked it like that before. And I actually think it cooked better. This might be an incredible, you know, watershed moment. So Stanley, what did you like so much about directing? The thing that I, I loved about directing was that I could be in the theater, and I love the theater. I'm very comfortable in the theater. Um, but also to be able to create a world, a very distinct world, with great actors, and then be able to walk away from it. What is your um, favorite passion? I feel like I need to go from one to the other. I have to bounce around. You act because you love acting, and I... I, I because act because I love it, but now I, you know, I have to do it, because that's how I make my living. So there are certain jobs you do for money, certain mm -hmm. jobs you do because you love it, certain jobs mm -hmm. because you do you do because of the director, certain jobs you do because of the script. That's why you might do three films a year and they'll be completely different. I know him through his movies. In Lovely Bones, he's, he's a dangerous guy, completely uh, crazy. And then uh, in Big Night, for instance, he's uh, the brother of the crazy chef and uh, uh, it's a very touching movie, however, he's playing a role in those movies. He's not the real Stanley. Any creative endeavor sort of has the same structure to it. It's constantly a battle between preparation, uh, knowledge, research, and, and spontaneity. Julie and Julia, you had to study, obviously. I did. You married her. I married her, yes. Yeah, you played Paul. But that was also um, a great movie. People really adored that film. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom used to watch Julia Child when I was a kid. And you were watching too. I was. I remember I would almost feel like I wanted to cry at the end of each show. Really? I know it sounds silly, but... It wasn't until years later that I realized that it's because she loved what she did so much that it broke... it broke your heart. Yeah. You know, and I always wanted to do something that I loved that much, you know? Because that's a great way to live your life. Yes, of course. Right? What do you think about um, food shows on TV? I think they used to be more inspiring. With Julia Child? With Julia Child, yeah. I prefer to see somebody like you just cook basically in real time, or the yeah. way Julia cooked. I really loved Mario's show that he had. Molto Mario? Fantastic, because yeah. also he has an encyclopedic knowledge of, of food. Yes. Um, I like the fact that he had people there, he talked to them, but he also really focused on those dishes. There's, he, a, there's a kind of a crassness to some of it now. And I think the competitions, some of, them are fine, but I think they're a little, it's a little out of control. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. He was right on. What is your favorite dish? Well, today, this is my favorite dish. I don't, you know, I don't, there are certain foods that give you comfort. To me, a favorite meal is also the company. You can give me the best food on earth if I'm by myself. 
Okay. It's meant to be shared. Yes, it's really exactly. meant to be I mean, shared. you're not going to hide the bottle of wine, and, and I mean, you're an alcoholic if you do right. that. And then what? <laughs> and if you take the fish and you put it somewhere and you hide it in a corner, right? No, uh, you, it could be a good Something character for a movie. Yes, right. <laughs> but it's a sad character. It's a sad yeah, character. It's a sad exactly. Character. Yeah. yeah. There are certain things that you remember, but really you remember them because of the people you, you, you're with. My wife passed away about three years ago, and we were skiing. We went out to lunch. We had this bottle of wine. It was nothing special. But to me, it was the best bottle of wine I've, ev I've ever had in my life. And it was about that place and time and that person. It was great. Memories are very great. important. Yeah, yeah. Well, Stanley, it was really a great pleasure to have you today. Thank you. And, and share a meal and learn how to make a martini. I know, I know. You, you might not walk out of here, but I might not either. But I really appreciate you asking me, and I'm oh, happy to be here. Very happy and honored that you, you came today. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Stanley, look what we have done. This is the recipe. Yes, um, this is the recipe in images, which is beautiful. So if you can write your name, it's good. I, I think I remember it. I have a vague recollection after the martini and the... I've never signed like that in my life ever. <laughs> uh, What's that? I don't know. <laughs> That's you. A piece of me, yes. Yeah. Yes. Stanley, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Well, I was hoping that Stanley uh, would do a good dish. I mean, actually, did two dishes. Well, I was very nervous, but it all worked out. Hey, this turns out. That result was pretty good. <laughs> really good. I love that. I, I was very happy um, to see him uh, so interested in cooking. Working with Eric uh, was really, really fun and, and inspiring. I'd like to spend more of my time doing this, if possible. I discover, I think, a lot of the real Stanley, which is a kind man who knows how to cook. Let's put a little zest in. We've had martinis, we might cut ourselves on the microplane. Or you make a slightly red risotto. Mastroianni used to love make blue risottos. Really? Using le de methylene, it's to disinfect and it's blue. What? And yes. And it surprises guests, of course, because nobody wants to eat a blue risotto. And for some reason, <laughs> Mastroianni was very passionate about that risotto. I, I believe it. your job and live the life you've always dreamed of. You're really living the dream, I would imagine, the expat dream. I feel more free here than I do in the States. This is it, man. Yeah. This yeah. is the life. Join me, Savannah Jane Buffett, as I follow Jameson Whitbeck, a native of Vermont who dreamt of building wooden boats and after college did just that. It wasn't long before he moved his wife and kids down to the Virgin Islands to become a charter captain of his very own handcrafted catamaran. First time we moved, we had, I mean, no money in the account. One, two, three. I think there's advantages and disadvantages wherever you are. It's just a trade off, and you choose which ones you want to live with. So, this is what it's all about, right? You get to take your kids down to the beach. Absolutely. Congratulations on making your life worth living. living. Yes.